Dear brothers and sisters, Dawad towards the path of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Invitation towards God's message is what I am going to talk before you about. When we know something which is true, which is correct, it is quite natural that we would want to share it with others. It would be selfish on the part of an individual to know the right path leading to success, happiness, salvation and then he or she is not prepared to share it with others. So if we have got a message which we think is correct and true, it is quite natural that we want to share it with others. Now because this is an important matter, it is a matter that has got to do with religion, with God's message and its presentation. There is a law, a detailed law that has been mentioned in the Quran whose uh, details are there in Ahadith that define, clarify as to what exactly is Dawa, who is going to present it and what should be the strategy, what should be the manner it should be presented in. We find this, uh, this explanation, the detail of the, call it Sharia of Dawa in the Quran. Uh, when we read the Quran carefully, and that's the only way of reading the Quran, you do tadabbur, you try to understand it. You read it in a manner that it appears as one consistent message. When you do it, you come to learn about the fact that inviting towards God's religion, the path of religion, has a number of different categories. It all depends on who you are. When your status vis-a-vis -vis religion and its understanding is going to be defined, then you will know what kind of obligation you have for inviting others towards God's path, his religion. The Quran, when we read it carefully, we find that it gives a number of different possibilities. There is one strategy, one law that has been mentioned regarding the Dawa, the invitation to be extended by prophets. That law, a good part of it, cannot be followed or expected to be taken as relevant to others. We find that the Quran mentions another law that is relevant to Aru Ibrahim, the progeny, the ch children of Ibrahim alayhi salam. That is also mentioned in detail in the Quran. Then we have a law mentioned in the Quran regarding the invitation to be extended by the religious scholars. 
So that is another category. And then we have another category of how religion is to be promoted by a state, Islamic state and its rulers. And then there is also a mention of how common ordinary people are expected to deliver the message. Now if you mix them up and you do not know clearly that they are distinct separate categories, then at times there is a great danger that what you are doing is not, not your jurisdiction, it's not your right, it's not your duty and things are going to be messed up despite the fact that you have good intentions. So first we need to understand what the Quran has got to say about these different categories of uh, sources that have to give dawah, that have to invite people towards the path of the Almighty. And no matter what category one belongs to, there is another important consideration which has been mentioned in the Quran and there are examples given by the Quran regarding the strategy that needs to be adopted. So basically what I'm trying to say is that I talk about two basic areas. One, what are the different categories of sources which are to invite people towards the path of Islam, path of the message of God? And number two, what strategy is suggested by the Almighty for those who are taking up the task of doing dawah for them to follow it. So number one, uh, the Quran tells us that first and foremost the message of God Almighty is to be delivered by the people who are called Anbiya, the prophets. They are chosen by the Almighty and they are chosen for the purpose that they deliver God's message. So the Quran, for example, mentions regarding the last Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Surah Ahzab, the 33rd chapter of the Quran, verses 45 and 46. Ya ayyuhun nabi, inna arsalna ka shahidam wa mubashiram wa nazira wa da'iyan ila Allahi bi izni wa sirajam munir. O Prophet, we, we have sent you as the one who is witness, shahid, wa mubashiran, and the one who gives good news, wa nazira, and warns people of serious consequences if they are not going to follow the path uh, properly, seriously. Badayyan illallah. And we have sent you as somebody who invites towards God's path. Bizni by his will, by his sanction. Asirajam Munira. And uh, we have sent you as, uh, as a torch, as a lamp, as a source of light which is very bright. So that is what the status of all prophets is. And this has been mentioned in the Quran addressing the last Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Quran tells us that to begin with, humanity had one religion. Uh, Adam Alayhi Salam, Adam and Eve, Habba Alayhi Salam, they together started the journey of mankind. And Adam Alayhi Salam was a prophet. So his children and the children of his children, they were all following the same religion. So the Quran says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 213, nasu ummatam There was a time when humanity belonged to one way of religious thinking. And then they disagreed. Then they disagreed. Then God Almighty sent prophets. Mubashirin wa Munzirin, who used to give good news and who used to warn. So 
the Quran is clarifying that this whole process of sending prophets to this world started when people began to disagree with each other. There was the right path, the path of Tawheed leading towards success, salvation, giving the right understanding. But there were people who started uh, deviating from the path. And therefore the Almighty decided that he is now going to send prophets who will give good news and he will warn good news to the people who will follow the right path and they will warn those who will choose to take a wrong evil path for their vested interests and the desires that they follow in this life which are immediately rewarding. That's why a man does things wrong. So these prophets would give good news to the ones who were doing the right things and would warn those that there are going to be serious consequences in the form of punishment in the next life if they will continue to follow the wrong path. The Quran tells us that within these prophets, now prophets I am translating Ambiya, Nabi, Prophet, Ambiya, Prophets. Obviously, it's a, in English translation, somebody can disagree with me. But the, the Quranic word is Nabi. From within the Anbiya, there were some who were chosen and selected to become Rasul. The plural of it, which is Rasul. And I'm translating it in English as messenger or messengers. So, these messengers who were Ambiya. So Nabi or Ambiya is a superset and within that superset Rasul are a subset. Going by the description of one hadith, there were 1,24,000 Ambiya amongst whom 313 were Rasul. So some were given the status of Rasul messengers. These Rusul they became shahid. They became a testimony uh, against those people who were given the message. Uh, the Quran says that when a, a Rasul would come, he would deliver the message in a manner. He will be accompanied by such circumstances that people would see right before their eyes that what is happening is absolutely true and what the messenger is telling us is, is correct. It cannot be wrong. One of, the, one of the reasons that we understand that the Quran mentions why it happens is that within the lifetime of Rusul, the messengers, uh, there would start happening events which would lead every observer to see that it's true. It's absolutely true. You know what religion is all about? Men who are not religious, who are just philosophers or otherwise ordinary people who don't believe in religion, they believe in God. They believe in morality. The one distinguishing feature of God's messages is, which is called Deen, God's, God's message, is that there is going to be a Yawmud Deen, a day of judgment. That is what an organized religion coming from God distinguishes all other philosophical understandings regarding how to lead a life uh, from others. You know? So, the most important thing that they present is that this life is a trial and after this trial there is going to come another life when you are going to be held accountable. It is not a mere statement that is meant to scare you. It's a reality. So what happens is the Quran tells us that this reality begins to emerge 
it begins to become visible while the messengers are there and therefore the people whom these messengers rasul address directly they they have no choice they can see from their eyes that it's it's getting more and more true it's making sense so the quran says the almighty sent these messengers rusulam mubashirina wa munzirin we sent these messengers who gave good news and who warned le allah yakun lin nasi ala allah hujjatun ba'da rusul this is uh, surah nisa fourth chapter verse 165 so that there should remain with humans no excuse whatsoever ba'da rusul after the arrival of rusul messengers this is what the messengers of god do they present the message they present it effectively they answer the questions they respond to the queries but then what happens is that things begin to happen uh which cause everybody everybody who is there present live at the time when they are delivering the message to know that uh, this is true this cannot be denied we can see it and therefore there is no excuse left with people who don't believe to be presented before god you know people cannot say that you know we we were a little confused i i couldn't understand i had a few problems in mind so the almighty says that all excuses are eliminated and this happens this happens through some incidents which have been described as uh, as uh, smaller manifestations of the day of judgment qiyamat is sohra smaller demonstrations of the day of judgment you know what is going to happen in the day of judgment on the day of judgment good people are going to be separated from bad people good people are going to be decided on the basis of their performance on the basis of accountability and they will be rewarded and evil people are going to be separated from them and they'll be punished you know why man gets confused because it doesn't happen here in this life it doesn't happen there are good people who suffer and there are bad people who flourish so man says doesn't make sense are you saying it's going to happen well we have not seen it but when messengers come they are accompanied by events circumstances which make good distinguished from the bad so very clearly that there remains no doubt and this happens because there are certain incidents that take place which are similar to what is going to happen on the day of judgment so a mini smaller day of judgment takes place and the quran is full of stories of the messengers in whose lifetime these lesser days of judgment were actually shown you know nu alay salam lut alay salam sol alay salam hud alay salam shuaib alay salam musa alay salam the stories of these six messengers have been repeated so many times each story at its climax tells us that god's punishment it visited those people who rejected them and his followers were rescued this is exactly what is going on the happen on the day of judgment the evil people are going to be punished and the good people are going to be rewarded so that's what is the dawa of uh, the prophets now you can imagine that in some sense some way in some measure we can follow them we must follow them but we cannot completely and totally imagine that we ordinary people would also be like them no 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 there is a difference and the quran mentions it that's number one the second the second of it is that uh, there are there is a family the quran clarifies which 
God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose, picked for doing just about the same thing which earlier prophets and messengers used to do. And that family is the family of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Abraham. His family was chosen. Before Ibrahim alayhi salam, it were individual prophets and messengers who were chosen. But then Surah Ali Ibrahim, the third chapter, verse 33 says, Inna Allah astafa Adam. God chose Adam. Wa Nuhan and Nu. Wa Ala Ibrahim. And the progeny of Ibrahim. Wa Ala Ibrahim. And the progeny of Imran. Allah Alameen. Over the entire humanity. Progeny of Imran because the context wherein it has been mentioned. It's, it's talking about Maryam alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam. So her father, his maternal grandfather is mentioned. But the real mention in this verse says that quite the same way as prophets and messengers were chosen by God Almighty individually, God chose to pick a family after a certain stage. In human history. Why is it Tala Ibrahim Rabbu Bikalimadin Fata Atam Mahuna? Kala inni jaya lukalin nasi mama. So uh, the Almighty says that uh, uh, God Almighty He uh, tested Ibrahim with certain uh, with certain trials and he lived up to them and then God made him the Imam. In the Jailukalinasi Imam of the entire humanity. And the Quran clarifies the way it happened was that his family, Ala Ibrahima, was chosen. Now we know that Ibrahim salam's family actually means that he had two famous sons. Ismail alayhi salam was the elder, and Ishaq alayhi salam was the younger. And Ishaq alayhi salam had a son, Yaqub, Yaqub alayhi salam, whose other name was Israel, and his children are called. Bani Israel, Banu Israel. Uh, they were given uh, something like 2000 years in which they were the ones who were given to deliver the message of God to the mankind as a family, as a nation. And they had in their history stories of successes and stories of failures. So when they were chosen, the idea was that if they're going to do well, they will prevail. They will be the leaders of mankind. Nobody will be able to uh, harm them. But if they are going to perform poorly, they are going to perform poorly. Who? The children of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Then they will receive punishment here. They will be insulted by the other nations. And uh, to cut a very long story short, uh, the children of Israel, the Jews, and the children of Ismail, the Arabs, right now are meeting with the same fate. It is God's law which has been mentioned in the Quran. They do well, they will be the leaders. They will prevail. Nobody is going to be able to stop them from, from being the leaders because they are chosen by God. But if they are not going to do well, then they'll be punished because that's what God wants to do in this life to tell humanity at large that this life is a trial and it is not just a statement to scare people that there's going to be another life it's a reality so that reality is demonstrated in this life uh, now through this family of Ibrahim so now what I'm saying is that the second dawah the second source category of invitation towards God's path is the one that is mentioned regarding the children of Ibrahim who first were represented by Bani Israel, Banu Israel and then they were replaced by Bani Ismail. So the Almighty says Kazalika ja'alna kum ummatam vasatas litakunu shuhada alannas wa yakunu rasul alaykum shahida. Kazalika likewise before this there is a long mention of history of Bani Israel so the Almighty says, now I have, I have abandoned them. 
you know, they have been thrown out. They have been deprived of their status because of their misdeeds. And the Quran mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah their misdeeds and says now, like they were chosen, they were selected and given the status, Jalna Kum, or children of Kismail, now you have been appointed, Ummatam Wasata, uh, an Umma which stands in between. That is, on the one hand, Liyakuna Rasulu Alaikum Shahida. The messenger is going to be a witness on you. He has delivered the message to you. Vatakunu Shahada Alannas. And now it's your duty that you will do over the entire man. And that's God's scheme. And as I said, before talking about invitation of, uh, towards the path of God, we must know what is the rule, what is the law that the Almighty has mentioned. If we will not understand the rules, well, we might have good intentions, but we will not have the fruits, the dividends coming, because we will not be doing in accordance with the Almighty's expectations. Number three, the third category of invitation is mentioned regarding scholars, religious scholars. They have their own role to play. The Quran mentions in Surah Tawa, chapter 9, verse uh, verse 100 and something. I have number 3. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know what the number is. The verse says, It is not possible for all believers to come out, all of them. This is a statement of a, of a reality which is true in all cases. You know, we humans don't do everything. Not all people become doctors. Not everybody becomes engineer. There is what you call uh, specialization. So that's what I, the Almighty is saying. It is not possible for all believers, lian firu kafa, that they all come out together, all of them. That is, not everybody can do it. So, falaula nafara min kulli firqatim min hum So why does it not happen that from each group tribe, they should come one smaller group. Why? لِيَتَفَقَّهُ فِي din So that they get deeper understanding of religion. وَلِيُنزِرُوا قَوْمَهُمْ إِذَا رَجَعُوا إِلَيْهِ And then they warn their nation when they return to them. لَا لَهُمْ يَحْزَرُونَ So that they too so that they too stay away. Now you want to you know the verse, somebody should look at the end of uh, Surah Al Surah Tawbah. It's, it's somewhere towards the end. When we look at this verse, there are a few principles that emerge. One, delivering God's message to everybody is not everybody's job. You know, if you don't know mathematics, please don't teach mathematics. It's not your job. Do what you can. It is a job, it is a task to, which has to be done by those people who have been trained in it. We will talk about our job as well. That's coming. But right now, I'm talking about what the Quran is saying clearly that there have to be people from each nation who should come, who should have an in depth knowledge of religion. They should not be blind people who are guiding others. They don't know anything and they are guiding others. They should be knowledgeable people who have specialized in this area and they should invite others. What should they do? They should have an in-depth understanding and knowledge of religion. You know the, the stuff, the message that they have to deliver, first they have to understand it themselves. Otherwise they are going to create problems. They will create confusions. They will deliver something which is not religion. So that's what they need to do. The third thing is, why sh what should they do? They should warn. The term, the expression that the Quran uses for Dawat 
His one in Zar. One. You see, it's, uh, what the Quran tells us is that there is only one news. There are no other news. That there is going to come a day when everybody is going to be held accountable. Death is not going to cause you to perish. After death, there is another life. And for that, we need to warn so that prophets warn, as I mentioned. And that is exactly what scholars are expected to do. They will deliver the entire religion, which they will understand. But the key word, the title is that they should warn. They should, they should warn whom? Oh, that's another important mention. They should warn their nation. That is, I should not go to Chile to start delivering God's message. Or for God's sake, I have my own nation, which understands my language, who know who am I, you know, what kind of character I have. If you are going to go to Chile, well, they will say, okay, these people are strange people, they are saying something. So the Quran, you know, each word of the Quran is important. Brothers and sisters, for the last eight or nine days, what I am saying to you people living here in Japan is that now it's your palm. You have decided to come here. You know, Lut salam, he did not belong to the nation uh, towards whom he was sent as a messenger. He was not born there. He was the nephew of Ibrahim alayhi salam. But he migrated there. And he lived with them. Married there. And he was declared as a part of the nation. Mm -hmm. So now you are a part of this nation. I am not. I may come and talk to you because in one way you are my nation. But you are the nation. So the scholars who get trained, Leon Ziru Kaumahum, they should go and warn their nations. There has come a scholar from one tribe, he will get trained, he will go back to his tribe. It's not that he will get trained and he will go to some other tribe. No, no. Everything in religion is natural. You will do it naturally. And finally, what is the ultimate objective? La Allahum Yazarum. So that people stay away. Stay away from uh, violating the Almighty's expectations. Stay away from earning his displeasure his uh, wrath, his uh, unhappiness and that's what the purpose is. So this is scholars. Number four, the Islamic State. There is a law mentioned regarding the rulers of Muslims. They have a duty if they are true Muslims as rulers. The Almighty tells them about them that uh, they should have a system in the society that should, they should create wherein they invite people towards goodness, they stop them from what is wrong and evil and they encourage them to do what is good. It's the same thing. It's mentioned in Surah Al Imran verse 104 and in Surah Hajj 22 verse 41 Al-Lazina in Makkanna um that's the Quran. You see, you will find that the Quran is absolutely consistent. It does not allow you to be confused. So, the Almighty says that the good people, good believers are the ones whom when we will give them uh, opportunity to rule, iqtadar, they will establish the system of prayer they will establish the system of zakat. They will stop people from doing what is evil. And they will encourage them to do what is good. Uh, in the Islamic uh, state, the sunnah of the Prophet, may Allah's mercy be on him, and of the rightly guided uh, rulers the, uh, of, of Muslims, uh, it established two institutions. One, call it police call it the department of Amr Bil Maruf Naheen Al Munkar which was meant to do this as a part of the obligation of the ruler that you cannot allow in the society evil things opening, happening openly what is Munkar, what is evil you all know it's evil has to be stopped 
and what is good needs to be encouraged the other thing is the other uh, the other tool that a muslim ruler has is you know what juma the the place where khutbah is delivered this khutbah this juma this masjid has to be established and run by muslim rulers it is not the duty or the right of an ordinary person and because our rulers generally speaking have not paid heed to this obligation of theirs you know what has happened sectarianism has naturally emerged when you will make a masjid you will make a masjid of your maslak i will make a masjid of my sect when the ruler is going to make a masjid it's going to be a masjid for everybody so wherever even today there are masajid which are run administered by the rulers whether good or bad otherwise there is no sectarianism malaysia saudi arabia etc so that's how these uh, rulers are also uh, to participate in spreading the word of god and uh, now we come to uh, the the fifth one that is us the order of people we are also have we also have the obligation we are not scholars therefore we are not going to make speeches in public where we would invite everybody because this is a specialized task there will be ask questions you know and if we give rubbish answers uh, which is going to bring a bad name to religion it has to be done by the people who are capable of doing it who have trained themselves for the purpose and it's the job of the society to do it to train them to and to make arrangements for their training like there are arrangements i keep saying in my country we wanted we were interested in health so we created medical colleges we were interested in making dams roads bridges we created engineering universities we were not interested in religion so we did not make institutions where scholars scholars who knew their religion well who were who did not belong to any sect and who would lead the society they are to be created and they'll do that job but ordinary people also have got to do the job of invitation and the quran says wal mu'minun wal mu'minat ba'dhum awliya ba'd believing men believing women they are helpers awliya of each other ya muruna bil ma'ruf wa yanhauna anil munkar they uh, invite encourage people to do what is good they stop others from doing what is bad this is something which is to be done by everybody wal mu'minun wal mu'minat this is exactly what the quran mentions in another brief surah very comprehensively surah al asr wal asri innal insana lafi khusr illa alladhina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bis sabr that is this past age times eras of messengers when those who were evil doers who rejected the message of messengers their punishment and destruction is a testimony to the fact that this nation which is bent upon rejecting the messenger it is also going to meet with the same fate except those who believe do good deeds watawaso bil haqqi watawaso bis sabr they invite each other to do good and they invite each other to continue to remain steadfast watawaso bis sabr sabr means to be steadfast to remain perseverant to to not waver to not lose heart and uh, and uh, run away so this is what everybody has to do now this particular this particular sura the invitation towards the path of the almighty's message that is mentioning requires that i should invite you and simultaneously you should invite me i mean it's not that it's going to be a one way traffic 
a father will tell his children children would also very politely tell their father friends would talk to each other i will not have an authority exclusive to dominate over others it's watawaso bil haqqi watawaso bis sabr doing mutually to one another that's one thing which this sura this particular sura clarifies the second thing that you learn from religion both quran and hadith in this regard is that this duty this obligation of inviting others is on the principle al aqrab fal aqrab the one who is closer to you naturally deserves more to be invited my parents my wife my children my brothers my sisters they are the closest to me and therefore they deserve to be invited the most the most sincerely and likewise whoever is closer is uh, is to be uh, taken seriously because what you are delivering is the most important message how can you allow those who are close to you to be deprived of it so one thing is that it has to be done mutually and obviously when you do it mutually you know that if you were to tell somebody you know what you think is wrong that somebody also has a right to tell me that uh, by the way brother what are you doing so it's going to be it's going to be mutual and has to be done in a proper way and the second thing is that the sequence is there has to be a list of priorities the sequence is that the one who is closest to you is the one who deserves the most and so on <coughs> number 3 there is another aspect of it which needs to be understood in the light of the quran and hadith in a hadith it is mentioned that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyati each one of you has a herd each one of you is a shepherd has a herd of animals which he is mending which he is controlling and he is going to be responsible for his herd for his group of animals well obviously it's a it's it's a, it's an expression a metaphorical expression that is uh, we all are given because of uh, the uh, natural distribution of obligations that uh, god has arranged we get married uh we have a wife uh we have children uh we do a job uh sometimes we have subordinates we might run a school we'll be administrators etc so no matter what we do there is a role of a shepherd that we will play and we'll be responsible for it and it is in that particular role that our obligation is a little more that is it's not just to invite you know when you invite you just use words but when you are responsible you can do more you can stop through your policies and at times i mean if things are getting serious you can uh, use your hand as well if it is something which is not going to cause problems so we are all responsible for Uh, the group of people that we are the captains the bosses the heads of this is exactly which is mentioned in the other hadith also which i want to be clarified because this hadith because it was not properly understood in the light of what the quran hadith says say uh, has caused many misunderstandings it is very famous man ra min kum munkar whoever sees amongst you something which is evil fal yughayyir hu bi yadihi he should change it correct it with his hands fa illam yastati and if he doesn't have the the strength the capacity to do it fa bi lisani then with his tongue fa illam yastati and if he doesn't have the strength the capacity to do it fa bi qalbi then he should do he should, he should condemn it in his heart fa zalika azafu liman and this is the weakest part of faith it is not something that gives me a permission license 
to go and interfere in the affairs of your homes. If I don't like the dress of my neighbor's wife, it's not my right to use my hand. It's, it's a description of my obligations within the territory, the area, the jurisdiction which has been described in the first hadith. <laughs> because of not understanding, that's what I'm saying. When you don't understand the perspectives, the result is trouble. You know, people would go into the road on the road and say this this shop we don't like. So we're going to destroy it. No, it's none of your business, sir. It's not your business. You have to just invite. And if you are in charge or in control of something, then obviously you've got a greater responsibility. But uh, you cannot you cannot interfere in the affairs of others. Now, as far as others are concerned, as far as others are concerned, you have to just invite. Invite and nothing else. Invite and nothing else. I have won the competition. Invite and nothing else. That is, you cannot force anybody. If the other person, if the other person is not under your control, then you just invite. Innama anta muzakkir. Lasta alayhim bi musaitir. You are only meant to remind. You are not a controller. This is what the Quran mentions to the Prophet So that needs to be clarified. Now, I have gone through the first part. And by the way, the biggest part. The second part is very small. Uh, that the mention of Dawa in the Quran that we normally use in a sense that it's meant for everybody. A careful study of the Quran reveals that this has categories. There is a dawa of prophets and messengers. There is dawa of the children of Ibrahim. There is the dawa of scholars. There is dawa of Islamic state. And there is dawa of the ordinary Muslims like us. Now, the second thing is strategy. When we are expected to give dawa, what kind of strategy is to be adopted? This again is mentioned in the Quran. Why? Because uh, obviously it's, a, it's an important matter. The most significant verse in the Quran with regard to the strategy of Dawah is verse 125 of Surah Nahad. You know, one of the things that we need to discover when we are reading the Quran is that which part of the Quran gives a basic guidance regarding a certain matter. So this particular verse is actually giving the basic guidance regarding the kind of strategy that you should adopt <coughs> when you are following the path of inviting others towards religion, towards faith. It says, <laughs> Invite towards the path of your Lord, Bil Hikmah with wisdom and with speech advice which is good effective and if you have to disagree if there is a dispute disagreement then deal with that disagreement in a nice decent manner your Lord knows who has estrayed from his path and he knows those who are rightly guided. So, the first thing is that uh, we have to invite people towards the path of our Lord wisely, intelligently. That's the most important advice the Almighty has mentioned. Uh, and the second thing is that our job, our job is to deliver. Our job is not to decide who is guided and who is misguided. That's not our job. It is not the task of people inviting others towards faith to decide that there are some people who are Gumrah. They have gone astray. 
ان رب کا وہ عالم امام اللہ سبیلی وہ عالم بالمحتدی یور لارڈ نوز ہو از دا ون ہو ہیز اے اسٹریٹ فرام اس پاتھ اینڈ ہی نوز وہ دا ونس ہو ہیو بین گائیڈڈ اٹس ناٹ یور جاب جسٹ ڈو یور ٹاسک ڈلیور دا میسج اینڈ ڈلیور اٹ انٹیلیجنٹلی ڈلیور اٹ پراپرلی اینڈ ڈو اٹ ان اے مینر دیٹ ایون اف یو ہیو اے ڈسپیوٹ ول دیٹ ڈسپیوٹ ہیز آلسو گاٹ ٹو بی ڈسکسڈ پولائٹلی and nicely and the next verse it says even if there is somebody who has done something unfair to you fine aqabtu faqibu bi misli ma uqibtum bi then you can only be strong against them only to the extent to the measure that they were wrong with you you cannot overdo it you cannot re- retaliate and uh, and uh, give back something which is more harsh strong uh that's what the quran says but it also says if you are patient that is much better that is you are inviting others towards the path of your lord and others are being unfair to you they doing something which is wrong which is clearly uh, violating the norms of decency you have a right to you have a right to retaliate but only to the extent that somebody else is not harmed to you but that is not ideal the ideal thing is that uh, you be patient and you do not retaliate at all the almighty says that this is much better this strategy is the strategy which is going to cause uh, your dawa your invitation to become effective uh, the almighty says in the quran in another passage la tastawil hasanatu wal sayyi'ah good and evil cannot be the same itfa bil ladhi hi ahsan when somebody somebody is being evil to you you respond with a way in a manner which is good which is polite fa izal ladhi bainaka wa bainahu adawatun then you know what's going to happen the one with you the one with whom you had enmity kanahu wali wali ul hamim is going to become a close friend of yours if you will be forgiving if you will be patient if somebody is taunting at you you know people use their tongues they they make statements slighting remarks insulting remarks and just you smile you all might say what is going to happen is that the one with whom you had enmity kanahu wali ul hamim but he also says wama yunqa illa allazina sabaru this is not going to be possible except for those who are patient steadfast wama yunqa illa zu hazzin azim and it's not going to be possible except for those who are very lucky zu hazzin azim who are immensely gifted with god's blessings so that's that's what needs to be done now very briefly let me just mention the uh, fact that the quran says that when we invite towards the path of our lord we are expected to do it wisely intelligently mm-hmm. now what it essentially means is two things one when we are inviting others towards the path we should we should look at the mental level of those that we are talking to and the other is we should also be sensitive about uh the way of thinking the background the psychology of the person you are talking to an unwise unintelligent person would say the same things to everybody in every place but a wise person will take into consideration the fact that he is talking to some people who have a certain mental level and who have a certain background now i'll just mention points just points uh what exactly do i mean uh number one when you're talking about mental level one of the things that you need to see is that uh we should start from the basics we should start from the basics of religion to the details of it quite often it so happens that a brother or sister comes to islam 
and we want him or her to appear in details like what we think a good Muslim should be. Without the poor chap ever knowing what are the basics, what is faith, what are the arguments, without giving the person a chance, we are uh, we we just you know burden him with everything. Uh, then uh, it should be gradual. We should give the religion to other people gradually, to our children as well, to newcomers, to friends. This is exactly what God Almighty did Himself. You know, in the Quran it's mentioned quite a few in quite a few passages that there were people Kalal Lazina Kafaru Laulal Nuzila Alayhi Quran Jumlatum Wahida. Why was the Quran not revealed on him in one go immediately? Well the Almighty says, Kazale, we did it likewise. Linus Fabbita bihi fwadaka. So that your heart, your soul becomes comfortable. We revealed it gradually. So that is how, while delivering the message, we need to be gradual. First the basics and then more. So let the brother who is a newcomer tell him that, you know, say your obligatory prayers. If that is burdensome, what do you say? <laughs> I have a, sorry. So that is uh, uh, important that we we do it gradually, and it should not be done in one go. Uh, everything. Uh, then, what the Quran also tells us is that uh, we should look at the psychology of people. That is. We should look at what their background is. Uh, we should start from what is easy and move towards what is difficult. The poor chap is a newcomer. You are inviting him. Make the task easier for him. Yassiru wala tawassiru. This is what the Prophet used to say. Make things easier. Do not make them difficult. And he said that we are the ones who have been given the task of giving good news mm -hmm. and we are not supposed to uh, scare and draw people away. Uh, then we should not criticize what others love, what others uh, hold dear to them. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people who got their own ideals. They have their ideal personalities. In fact, the Quran has mentioned God to the extent that it says that uh, people who are emotionally attached to their false gods, La tasupul lazina yadruna min dunillah, don't use abusive language against them. That's the extent that the Almighty has asked us to be careful. Uh, we cannot make loose talk. You know, we cannot criticize others openly, even if they are wrong, especially when they are emotionally attached. You've got to be careful. Uh, and then we've got to respect others uh, in their in the speech that we are making, uh, especially if there are people who are who are uh, uh, strong, who have a high status, who are rich who are the ones who uh, are popular because they have their own ego. You know, if you are going to go to somebody who is famous, who has a high status and you will start talking to him rudely and forget about the message going to him. So that the Almighty mentioned to Musa salam when he was going towards Firaun to deliver the message, he said to both brothers, Musa and Harum salam, Kula lahu qawlul, qawlul layina. Say to him in a speech which is soft, which is polite. Because the idea, the idea is not to scare the person away. The idea is to invite him. So do as best as you can to make sure that uh, you are inviting in the best manner. Also the Quran says that if they make fun or you of your religion, you are talking to them. You are inviting them. And they are making fun of your religion. Don't start fighting with them. 
Don't start slapping them or hitting them. Stand up and go away. Remove yourself from there. Surah Anam, 6th Surah, verse 68, mm -hmm. which is repeated in Surah uh, Nisa as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the extent of intelligence, wisdom, sabr that is needed. You are inviting others and he's making fun. Oh, actually, okay. You talk about God. Where is God? You talk about life and after. But what about your position right now? You know, so you find that the chap is not interesting and he's making fun. Instead of reacting angrily, stand up and go. You never know. You will come to him the next time and he's in a different mood and might hit him and he might get converted. You have no idea. So that's also what we need to do. And uh, our, our presentations should be interesting, unlike my presentation, which causes people to gradually go away from their unbelievers. But it should be interesting. It should be done in a manner that people, they, they get, you know, they, they, they are inclined to, to listen. And that's what, what we should do. Uh, also, a very important uh, uh, lesson or advice of wisdom that the Quran mentions is that don't talk to them, don't talk to people about religion when they are in no mood to listen to you. There is no, there is no joy in having huge crowds and forcing them to listen to you. Find an occasion when they are interested. If they are not interested, it is not your job to de deliver. Fazakir in nafat is zikra. You remind when your reminder is helpful, is beneficial. It's not beneficial. He says, I am listening to uh, something else, a song. I am watching a football match. I am watching a movie. You say, no, you have to listen to my speech. Forget about it. It's not allowed. You should not do. So we need to look at the interest and then create occasions when, uh, when the, other people, the other people that you want to talk to are interested in. You know, uh, it's mentioned in the Quran that when in, in the prison, Yusuf salam was approached by two fellow prisoners and they asked him to interpret their dreams. Well, he said that, you know what, I will let you know the interpretation of your dream before our lunch or whatever is going to come. And then he saw that because those two young people were interested in listening to him, they were impressed by him, then he delivered the message. Mm -hmm. So if people are not interested, first create interest in them. Invite them to tea or whatever meals you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they then say that, okay, sir, make a speech. Uh, therefore, I was, I was really impressed when I came to learn about a brother. You know, he was a teacher. Uh, he was a local teacher of Japanese. And he became a Muslim. Yeah. And unfortunately, he's left uh, Japan and has gone to Turkey. But I think what he did was, he used to do was brilliant. You know what he used to do, sir? He would invite Japanese to have meals, free meals. I'm told that Japanese are interested in eating, so and eating different kinds of food. And that meal was, you know, provided to them, given to them, in a restaurant, and it would be good quality meal. There he would speak for no more than two three minutes, nothing more than that, and would give basic invitation and would say that if any one of you is interested in knowing more about it, after this meal, we'll go to another restaurant. Brilliant. That is brilliant. You are not burdening those, you know, because it could be that one might say that I am spending so much of amount, such, so, so much of money in giving them meal that these fools must listen to my speech, one hour speech. No, no, that, that, that's not advisable. So what he, is, that what he used to do uh, is one good example of how you deliver God's message intelligently and wisely. And he says, you know, the gentleman was telling me that that brother would mention that in every such uh, invitation, there used to be one or two who would convert. And this is brilliant. So don't 
burden people with your speeches even when they are not interested. And last but not least, last but not the least, thanks God, smiles everywhere. <laughs> Talk to people first about points of commonality. Talau ila kalimatin samang bainalava baina. The 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 ideas, the concepts which are common between us and you. And from there, proceed towards where you have distances. You know why? It's again a very important psychological uh, consideration. If I am going to start first with a bouncer, it's a, it's a cricket, cricket uh, expression, and I'll scare the other person, well, he's not, he's not going to listen to me. He comes and no sooner does he meet me, he says, Oh, are you a follower of that man? He has gone astray. He is a fool. Finish. Full stop. The communication is dead. There is no further possibility of any exchanges. No, no, no. We must start with things which are common. So there is a, there is a confidence that is built between the two. And then gradually start talking about things which are different, politely, and things are going to be more effective. So, brothers and sisters, uh, I was asked to make a presentation of uh, Dawah, and I mentioned that there is a law of Dawah uh, that is clearly mentioned in the Quran, if we read it carefully. It talks about the fact that uh, Dawah is to be presented uh, by different sources uh, in different ways. And there are five, at least five categories of sources that I mentioned. The prophets, the children of uh, Ibrahim, alayhi salam, uh, scholars, rulers, and the ordinary people. And I also mentioned that the Quran uh, clearly states that there is a strategy that needs to be adopted and the strategy is that we must present religion intelligently and wisely and there are many different uh, uh, considerations that need to be taken into account when we present God's religion uh, intelligently and politely. Akulo Koli Haza uh, I said what I had to say and may Allah forgive me and you and my Israeli Muslim and I know all Muslim men and women. Thank you very much for your patience. So, Yes, I like it. Yes. In your first part, you said that there is a sector of the in Islam. But what the Quran said is there is a sector in the Quran, the Hadith, the Quran, the Quran. But the, in the light of the uh, uh, Quran, is there, there is a sectorism or the, how the people make the sector? Uh, <coughs> when we are talking about sectarianism, yes. sects, there is no reason why there should be sex. The Quran is absolutely clear that sectarianism has to be avoided. Hold fast to the rope of God, that is the Quran, and do not disintegrate into factions, into sects. Uh, if by sect we mean that you uh, are more impressed by one scholar or a group of scholars and I am impressed by another scholar or a group of scholars, that doesn't make a sect. So long as we are listening to each other and we are prepared to accept a good opinion from the other scholar. Nothing wrong with it. It's Actually, it's natural that I will probably have a different scholar or a group of scholars uh, whom I am more impressed by than you. You know, you come from a different background, I come from a different background, I, have, I had my own experiences, you had your own experiences. The Almighty says that these differences are a trial, it's a test. However, a sect emerges when it is decided that those belonging to a particular sect will have a name 
its followers are going to follow only what is said there in the set and the others are not even going to be listened to and heard with an open mind and what happens then later is that people belonging to one sect they start thinking negatively about those belonging to the other sects at least they think that they are different and in many cases they think that they are that kind of inferior that kind of understanding of sect is something which is not just that it's not allowed it's condemned so we are one umma we are muslims i may have views different from you you may have some other views why do you have your views because you had your own experiences you come from a different background but once we start discussing with each other it may happen that i might i might start accepting some of the views that you think are right and maybe vice versa so we are all muslims we are all one umma and uh, uh, if you say that you studied in karachi in a certain college and i studied in lahore in a certain college and i am a helian and you are whatever sadati and you are whatever that's no problem that's talking about backgrounds but if these backgrounds and these labels they become a reason for us to be divided and us to not be able to talk to each other it's then obviously that it becomes a curse and the quran very clearly uh, denounces and uh, discourages us from falling into sex You you understood what I said? Everything. Alhamdulillah. That's great. Okay, okay, brilliant. Uh, this Japanese brother is asking me this question that uh, he, in this society, in this country, knows many people who have a, a very good morality. They are good humans. They've got a good mind. Uh, their behavior is excellent, uh, but somehow they have not converted to Islam. so what is going to happen to them right uh i would divide what you've asked me your this question into two parts the first part is that brother keep a contact with them keep talking to them keep thinking of ways to help them understand uh you never know you never know sometimes it takes time and keep asking yourself how can i make him or her more interested make the presentation of islam interesting for others as i said you know there's many things that we can do look at it from his or her point of view you know for example uh only yesterday i was there in this masjid turkish masjid and I, 
Uh, there were many Japanese men and women who were there. And I, I, I said to them that there are some serious questions that we all have in mind while living in this world. Who created this world? Why did he create it? Why are there problems in this life? Why am I not, not satisfied? What am I expected to do? What is going to happen after death? These questions, every good, decent, sensitive human being is worried about. And these are the questions which God Almighty answers most convincingly and confidently in His message. So, when we talk to them, we know that they, they are humans like us. So, we must continue to make every effort to help them come closer. That is the first part. The second part is that what is going to happen to them? Honestly, the answer is, I don't know. I don't even know about myself. I am trying. We are trying. Uh, the Quran tells us that on the day of judgment, the Almighty is going to ask people about their performance on the basis of their capacity. You know, capacity, potential. How much they could know. How much they could do. God knows what capacity, what potential a person has. And He will decide on the basis of that knowledge whether the person did as much as was possible for him or not. God is going to punish people, those people who will do, do wrong knowingly. You know, knowingly. They knew that it's wrong and then they did it because of their ego or because of their dirty desires. Uh, you know, ego, desires, if a person does not convert to Islam, on the day of judgment, God is going to ask this question. Why did you not convert to Islam? There could be two answers. Two possible right answers. One could be that he or she did not convert because the person did not understand. Because the person was not delivered the message properly. The other answer could be that he knew that it was right. But he said, I am not going to do it. He was arrogant, he was rigid, and he had his own worldly vested interests. In the second case, he is going to be caught. In the first case, he is not to be blamed. Probably others who were supposed to deliver the message to him, they will be asked, why does he not know? It was your duty to tell him. Why did you not tell him? It? Why did you not tell him properly? Now, this decision, whether he did not know it and therefore did not convert, or he knew it and did not convert, who is going to decide it? God. And God knows everything. And God is fair, just, and God is merciful. So our job, as I mentioned in one of the verses that I quoted, our job is to deliver. And inna rabbaka alamu biman dalla an sabili. Your Lord knows better who has strayed from his path. But who alamu bil And he knows who are guided. It is not my job to say that this man is a kafir and he's going to go to the hell. And this man is a believer and he's going to enter the paradise. I don't know. This is only God, the Almighty, the All-Knowledgeable, the Merciful, who is going to decide. Yes, 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 sir. As Brother Zakir Naik says, I hope I have answered the question.
भाई को कहवा उसको कैसे इसका मतलब है कि हम अगला कुछ बात करें यस प्लीज गो अहेड satisfaction as well good path in many cases is testing trying but it gives you satisfaction and we know what is right from what is wrong but we still do evil wrong because we are free and because evil is attractive and god has given us freedom because this life is a life of trial had it been not a trial we would have been doing things forcibly reluctantly without even having any any desire any inclination you know that is precisely the reason why when angels when they were presented with the idea that god is going to create man in the jailun filardi khalifa you know what they said they didn't say samena wa atana yes sir we accept it they said attajalu fiha may yufsidu fiha wa yasfiqu dawam are you going to create there somebody who is going to cause mischief on earth you know mischief violence destruction and they are going to kill each other shed the blood of each other you know why angel said that why did they have? because the new god is creating somebody who is going to have freedom as you asked and they said wa nahnu nusabbihu bi hamdika wa nuqaddisu lak we are doing all praise for you we are worshiping you so now your next question is about it god said when he said inni alamu ma la talu i know what you don't know and if i was to briefly tell you what god's answer was he showed them through adam alayhi salam adam the you know the answer the answer was this 
that God said, I'm, it's not exactly in these words, I'm paraphrasing it. God as if said, angels, you have a point. You have a point. But you have not looked at the total picture. You simply looked at the negative side of my picture, my design. You have not looked at the positive side. So God asked Adam, Adam, to introduce to the angels those great humans, prophets and noble people who despite the freedom to do evil, would do good deeds. And God said, that's why I'm making You know, brother, if you do something good and you don't have freedom, your goodness is zero. It is meaningless. Because you are not doing it on your own. You are not doing it freely. But if you do good deeds, although you have got freedom, that is what will make you get the credit for it. So freedom is at the very heart of uh, the scheme of life that the Almighty has arranged for mankind. Yes, sir. Yes. I have a question. Please. Uh, you have said very nicely that we should uh, call the people to Islam and to Quran and to Sunnah with Hikmah. Mm -hmm. so, hikmah includes knowledge. Right. Mm -hmm. If I have knowledge, then I should do call the people for it. But there are people who, have, who know nothing. Excuse me for this. You know, there are, not everybody knows how to preach Islam and how to uh, know the psychology and how to do it in proper time and in a mood, as you said, the people should be able to move it. So they are not thinking, they think that anywhere, anybody I catch and I start giving them a lecture and giving them a uh, yeah. message for 10 minutes, 20 minutes without any hikmah. So does it mean, do you mean that first we should uh, get proper knowledge and training and learn how to do dawa, then we should do dawa, Absolutely. dawa or just, just I, I know nothing but I start dawa. You see, I presented before you yeah. the verse of Surah Tawba. It makes it absolutely clear. It is not possible for everyone mm -hmm. to do this task. Why then is it not happening? Some people from come should come from every group, every nation. So that they get understanding of religion, proper understanding. And then they return. They return and then they warn them so that they also become God conscious. Uh, there are two ways of tackling this problem as you mentioned. One is that if there is a proper Islamic state, it would decide that, uh, you know, there are certain people with certain qualifications who will do this job. I will as a friend and you also as a friend can tell me, but not to the publication at large. The other thing is that now that, you know, there is no proper Islamic state and therefore they are not doing their job, I think we should make people aware of the fact that they should not listen to every Tom, Dick and Harry, you know, they should be, they should be selective, yes. they should be careful. Uh, otherwise, you know, I mean, if people are not listening to you or to me, our job is not to force anybody. We'll just tell them that this is God's law. You know, after all, what else can you do? You cannot force people to understand the way you are understanding. <laughs> We are expected to help others understand in a polite, wise and intelligent manner. And one of the things that we must make them understand is that it is not the right of everybody to start delivering the message. You know, you make an appearance of yourself which looks like a, you are a religious leader or a scholar and you start telling people things uh, which have got nothing to do with religion. People with knowledge. People, people with knowledge. Absolutely. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you very much